Hello, my friends, and welcome to Portfolio Reviews. My name is Julia Maselska, and I'm the host for this main channel. So for all of you who are new here, welcome. Today, we're going to be reviewing five portfolios of amazing designers who have, um, you know, wanted to get, get some feedback and wanted me to give some inputs how they can improve their work. So um, thanks everyone for joining today. Let me know in the chat who is there. Let me, give me a high, give me a high five. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to jump onto my uh, screen and um, let's see what we've got there. So we have five amazing designers. As I just said, uh, we have Hannah Dickens. We have um, Mariam Alsig. We have Niraj Kushvaha. And we have Bruno Silva. And we also have Mustafa S. Mohammed. So uh, really, really excited. Let's just start with Mustafa. Mustafa, you have, to, uh, you have um, sent me your Behance portfolio. So um, let me, let me take a quick look. I wanna see what we are going to be reviewing first. First of all, what I'm noticing is that you have a bunch of projects going on already, which is a good sign. If that will give us some, you know, um, room to improve, room to work, room to sort out the things that maybe are outdated. So if you feel like some of the projects maybe are not your current, um, you know, state of um, state of mind or uh, that are not representing your current skill set, you can uh, you can definitely filter out some of these projects that are maybe older, maybe three four years old where you're not very proud about them anymore and where you know that you have improved from there. So this is actually a really, really good start for you, for your uh, Behance portfolio especially. Just sort out the projects that you maybe not want to present to everybody. So that will be the first step. Since you have so many, I think you can totally allow yourself to reduce this uh, these projects by at least five. So we have now one, two, three, four, um, 16, um 20 24 we have um 29 projects so if you have 24 projects it's more than enough so i think you can even reduce them to 20. so let's just jump into it and here we have your little about me section let's take a look at that um hi kamal good to see you um kamal by the way guys if you want to submit your portfolios head over to my instagram it's at julia masalska and this is where you can submit your portfolio for review. If you just shoot me a message, I'll take a look at that. I'll put you on the list. So um, we're going to be doing this every Friday. So super, super excited to see some of your guys' stuff. All right. So Mustafa, let's go through your about info. We have um, a freelance creative graphic designer seeking to create original designs, providing real solutions to clients with different origins and purposes. Five years of practical experience in the field of graphic design, working with worldwide clients and providing creative designs that make me proud of. Super cool. I think that's a really good intro. You're giving some some background of, about yourself, uh, what you've been working on and you've been working with different origins, purposes. That means you're culturally well, very well uh, familiar. So that's that's super cool. Five years is a good amount of years and I would totally put it here so that the uh, potential client knows hey, this guy knows what he's doing, right? So super cool, I think that works pretty well. Let's take a look at some of your projects. Let's take a look at this Bake My Cake project, for example. It kind of jumped up to, out to me because if you look at all the other projects, there is a little bit less color and this one is just very poppy, very bright. And that's just something that really, um, you know, attracts me and wants me um, to look at it. Cool, um, Bake My Day. First of all, really cool name, Bake My Day. Oh, very nice delight in every bite wow we have some uh, we have some really cool copy here really love it uh, since 2019 and um, love that maybe there is a way to kind of position it not vertically but horizontally I'm thinking that might be a little bit better legible and um, these things are usually put in horizontal so we kind of expect it to be in horizontal um, alignment but in this case, I feel like it's well legible and um, after a couple seconds, you kind of get it and you understand what it means. Delight in every bite. Here, I would say maybe I would increase the typeface a little bit and reduce the um, reduce the kerning size. So the kerning will be a little bit smaller that will push the letters together 
and I think if you then instead decrease, increase the size of the typeface itself, it will make it a little bit well, uh, more well legible. So, um, all right, Bake My Day is a shop specialized in baking sweets and desserts such as donuts, ice cream cake, birthday cake, etc. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm really loving the colors. I think you did a really great job doing the illustration here. I would just make sure that you keep the line um, thickness the same everywhere. So inside the donut, there is this little circle. I would make it the same line thickness just to keep it cohesive. Otherwise, I think it looks really, really nice. I love how you are showing the logo in four different variations. One is the full color, one is black and white, which is more like a grayscale logo. I would uh, maybe recommend to try and really reduce it to, to two to three colors so that there is not too many. That makes it easier for the print. So usually when we design a logo, we try to get like not to use too many colors because for the client, every single color means cost, right? So when they, uh, for example, print packaging, for every single color uh, means cost. That's the reason why we always should have this black and white variation so that in cases where we cannot use too much color, the client can use the black and white version. But this is really great. I think that works really well in black and white. Um, I think you did a great job showing that all here, also white on yellow, maybe not the best uh, background color because um, yellow i think is not uh, very far from white so maybe um there is a way for you to kind of show it um on a darker background maybe make it like um squares or uh, behind the logo so um so that this will get a, a darker color usually we show white on black and black on white just because it gives a lot of contrast and it, it's really easy to understand and see the logo right so um now we have the pantones here Pantone FEDE91 and FEC25D. Cool. I think that's that's really cool. So you're showing the gradient basically. And then we have the brand colors here. I think that's pretty cool um, and works, works super well. I, love, I like the way you're showing this. Okay, let's see what's what else is here. Bake my cake. Love the illustrations. I think that's a really great way to show the illustrations. I'm just wondering if uh, if this illustration kind of match together because I feel like these on the right page are more um, you know line art like as if it's actually sketched and um, on the left side they're more um, you know vector lines so so they are very consistent lines and if if your purpose if your goal is to put these two illustrations together I'll make sure that these illustrations have the same style I think that will give a lot of uh, kind of cohesiveness in the brand also cool um, then we have this little um, you know an intro um, screen here into an app maybe um, I think that's super cool um, I feel like the phone is a little bit too tilted maybe you can show it a little bit more to the front lean to the front so that it's better visible if that makes sense then we have the mood board here super cool i love i love the pictures i think the pictures are pretty cool um they have they do have a different style though so here in the the coffee one is uh very like has this really dark coffee shop mood with warm lighting and these are very light pictures so i would make it, make sure that all the images that belong to a brand are cohesive right because the picture is not only the, the images are not only you know to show the objects or the products that are being sold but also to bring cohesiveness with the brand so whenever somebody sees an image of this brand they know that it, it belongs to to this exact brand right cool so it's good to, ha to have cohesiveness also in the colors i feel like the left uh, top one is great and maybe I would even remove all of the other ones just to kind of show um, You know how how the colors that you're using in the brand which pink is one of the colors So that's pretty cool. And also since this is a mood board um, I would give you some ideas what else you can put into a mood board a mood board is not only images It can also be you know typefaces. It can be colors. It can be um, different things that are aspects of a brand so it can be illustrations it can be you know different um, other uh, images that necess don't necessarily have to do with this exact product so you can also take inspiration from you know cosmetics or from anything anything that exists that has this color palette and that has this exact um, 
you know, way to show the product that you want to kind of implement in your brand. So that's what a mood board is actually for, to give you the mood for the project, to give you the inspiration for the project, right? So in, in this case, I feel like the mood board is not very cohesive, but I, I'm sure you can work on this and, um, you know, find, find better ways to kind of show the exact brand that you're working for. Cool. Yeah, I think this image also works really well if you put it into the mood board because it is cohesive with this other image and with the colors that you've been using. So we have this pink here and then if we would have these donuts and these flowers and these donuts, I feel like that will work better. Okay, so now we have the packaging. I think you did a great job here. Um, I'm, I'm wondering this color, if this is the same color. Yeah, kind of. So we have this more brownish looking color. And here at the bottom, we have this color that's more an orange um, ochre color. So it's more um, on the brown side, but it's kind of also on the yellow side. If you are really making stuff like this, I will make sure to make it cohesive and to reuse the same colors. Now let's take a look at the blue here. We have this blue that's more like a sky blue, right? And, um, and it does match this one as well. So it does work here. Um, I feel like the background color here on the top side of the packaging I feel like um, could be more either brown or yellow. Um, whatever you want to use. I feel like the brown one was your main brand, one of the main brand colors. So I would make it more brown here. Cool. Yeah, um, it's really nice how you're putting this together. I feel like right now, since there is a shadow underneath, it feels like the box is floating. So, but I feel like you wanted to put it, um, you know, to make it touch the ground. So um, yeah, I would remove that shadow here and make the shadow start from this part. And also, um, you can also take a look if there are any mock-ups that already exist for this specific packaging. Here we ha also have a little bit of pixelation, so make sure to export your images in 150 pixels um, um, uh, dots per inch. So, um, so here we have a little pixelation. That means the you know the image quality is not as good. And now I'm opening. I you know I admit my screen is pretty large, and if you probably look look at your phone, you probably won't see it. But here I see it, and it doesn't look very um, very professional to me. So I would make sure that the images are um, very high quality and or high quality enough for a big screen, which will be 150 dots per inch export. Cool. I love this mock-up. I feel like this, this mock-up already, um, you know, you found it somewhere where it already existed. Um, it looks really, really nice. I love the reflections on the, on the bags here. It works really well. Hi, Shafi. Good to see you. Uh, let me know, guys, where you're tuning in from in, um, in the chat. I would love to kind of start a conversation. And if you have any questions in between in the stream, make sure to ask, uh, ask them and we can, um, you know, try and answer all of those. Cool. All right. So um, we have we have these background um, colors that are repeating themselves and the shapes. I think you did a really great job here. We have these waves that are kind of repeating themselves and you have a little texture also here that's repeating itself in the other uh, mockups, which I think you did a really great job there. I think that's um, that's makes it more cohesive and makes makes it look like it belongs together. Super cool. All right. Uh, otherwise, I think this brand looks super fun, and I think you did a great job on this bro on this project. Um, I definitely give a like, um, and um, yeah, super cool. All right, let's take a look at another project. Let's see what we else have here. So limited discount. Let's. So guys, the last project that you have in your portfolio should be the project that reflects your recent skill set, right? So it should be your best ever project because you are always getting better, right? You're not getting worse or you're not going like that up and down. You're always getting better. So the, the last project should be the best project that you've ever made, right? So because, um, um, because we are, um, you know, looking at, um, at the different things that you want to present to the client. And if they're not your, your recent skill set, then, um, you know, it's, it's not what you want to show. Okay, so let's see. Um, we have this little uh, title image here, dental capital branding, social media package. Cool. Okay, so it's a, basically a social media package that you're offering the, uh, the client, the potential client. Okay, super cool. 
uh, wondering what that exactly is limited discount da, 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 da. I, I'm not sure why exactly this is divided uh, because it's supposed to be a post right so it should be one image I guess um, just always make sure that everything that you put makes sense and also we have dental capital so dental has to do with teeth and I'm guessing all of these things have to do with teeth as well it looked like electronics to me to be honest cool all right um, I feel like this could work it's just that this um, you know divider in between kind of throws me off a little bit usually um, if we have a post it's just one you know one square cool yeah this is way better right we don't have this divider in here so this is definitely better cool love these the third dimension da, 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 da. so this is kind of like an event promotion i guess event um template pretty cool i'm wondering if if you could do a little bit less of these um you know emojis in between i'm, I'm i understand that it's kind of like part of the mood and everything but it kind of you know it, it catches my attention more than the work itself and you want to always concentrate on your work you want the person to look at your work right not at these emojis that are really intense because they are very vibrant and they totally catch my eye right now which is good in some ways but in other ways you also want to um, you know concentrate on the actual work so maybe put them just a little bit up so they're not inside your artwork right so they're more outside and they're more like to give the mood and to give this um, impression that you're on a social media page, right? Cool. Again, the same thing here. I would totally move them away or even leave them out because you already have a lot of stuff happening in the background. There is already a lot of stuff happening in the background. So what you want the client to do is you want them to concentrate on the actual post. <clears throat> so I would reduce all the things that distract and that, um, you know, um, make you focus on uh, on other things if that, if that makes sense cool all right print designs a flyer a voucher card roll up okay okay cool I feel like here you could leave a little bit more um, distance a little bit more spacing to the sides because it goes really close to the edge here and sometimes when we print you know um, we need to leave some space on the, on the sides because when, once the print is completed the way the printer cut, cuts it sometimes can be a little bit unprecise so it can be you know it can be eventually it can lead to them cutting off some of your text so make sure to leave a little bit more space around it and so that the important information or the important text is not so far on the edge but i think it's a cool way to um to show what you want to show I love the, all the little effects that you're putting in the background. It's pretty cool. Um, cool. And this is, I'm assuming, the back side. So maybe there is a way to show this flyer from both sides at the same time. So in just one, um, you know, in just one image. I think that would sum it up pretty well, and it would also make it easy to understand that this is the front side, this is the back side. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, and also warranty 30 months okay i feel like this works honestly like a like a regular type of flyer i would maybe not use so much caps in the um in the designs here because caps are generally pretty difficult to read we are used to reading um you know um <clears throat> uh, we're used to reading um with uh, you know uh, lowercase and um <clears throat> capitalization so um so in this case, I feel like caps are not necessary and they're kind of like screaming too much. For me, it's, it's I don't know for all of you <laughs> who is here in the chat, but caps are always like screaming. Like if you're chatting with somebody and they're writing everything in caps, it's like, ah, you know? Okay, so let's see who is here in the chat. Farhad is here, cool. Uh, Arka Prabha is here, hi. Shafiq, um, we already said hi. You're from India, that's super cool. I've spent some time in India, it was awesome. Cool, uh, and Farhad uh, Ushmani is here from Pakistan, super cool. And Mustafa is here, it's for related posts. Yeah, I get it, but then show them um, show them in context. And if you have four related posts, then, you know, show the different posts instead of, you know, dividing that one post. I feel like it make, makes more sense, um, if that makes sense. 
Cool. Um, Shafiq is asking where or how to find new and good clients. That's a great question. And um, you know, the answer here will be connecting, connecting personally. Right now, it's a little bit difficult, but I would say connecting personally with people and always mentioning that you're doing this type of work so that they know that if they have something like that coming up, they can reach out to you. They can recommend you to friends. They can, um, you know, get some kind of benefit for it. So let's say um, a client that you've worked with in the past um, leaves you a review and recommends you to somebody, you give them a certain percentage of their deal and the next time, on the next, um, in the next uh, job that they are going to order with you, right? So always offer some benefits as, um, you know, in return for recommendations or reviews. Um, my advice is to create a, a Google business, create a Google business, go on Google and type in Google business and create an account there with your business and with your business location that will attract local clients. So let's say I'm looking up on my phone, graphic designer, and it will show me the near me results, right? So who is near me? Who is a graphic designer? And you will pop up and they will, might call you. They might hire you for that, for a job, you know? So that's one thing that I don't see a lot of designers doing. And um, I think that's a pity because why not attract the local people, you know? Why not um, getting in touch with someone who is nearby? Um, I think that can help a lot. And then there's um, there are a bunch of sites um, like um, Upwork and so on, which where you can start as a designer, but I don't think that's the point where you should be, you know, once you kind of get confident with your work, you should make your own website, you should make your create your own social media, be present on social media constantly, um, posting your work, um, tagging people, creating new work that's maybe like a passion project, and putting it on Behance that because usually passion passion projects stand out passion projects always um, you know um, attract attract a certain audience that you want to attract right so if you have never created a project a packaging project and now you have worked on the passion project and you've uh, put it on your Behance that will give a reason for somebody to reach out to you um, for a for another packaging project, right? Although you've never really done one in, in real life, but you know, having one in your portfolio that's a passion project can help you get a client who wants, uh, you know, a, um, a packaging. So um, there are different ways and I usually don't do any advertising for myself. What I do is I'm present on social media and also a good thing is, <clears throat> A good thing to do is um, to reach out to local agencies. So what I have done in the past is I have met someone who owns an agency and I was like, hey, you know what? I'm a graphic designer. If you need, if you need someone very spontaneously and for a quick turnaround, uh, for a quick job, and maybe all of your designers are busy at this point, you can hire me as a freelancer. I can come in into your project, help you for one or two weeks and then jump back out, right? That's also a very helpful one. Uh, get in touch with all of the agencies around you and uh, let them know, send them your portfolio. Let them know, hey, you know what? If you have an overload on work, I'm here. I can help you out quickly and um, you can rely on me. So that's one of the things that I've been doing also. <clears throat> that's a little bit more of a niche. But once, uh, once, you're, uh, once the kind of COVID situation is over, um, I feel like it's great to go on trade shows where they're, let's say it's a packaging trade show internationally. That's a great opportunity for you to promote your services and um, to speak with people and to find clients that you want to work with, right? So if you see someone with really great uh, packaging or great branding, but not great packaging, you can offer them your services to improve their packaging and so on. So I'm always a big um, advocate of personal contact and, um, and you know, really talking to people about what you're doing and showing that online. So um, updating your Behance portfolio, updating your Instagram, your Dribbble, your social media, any, anywhere where you're posting work, just, you know, keep, keep it going. Cool. Um, Shafiq is saying, but I only get shitty clients. You get shitty clients in the beginning 
but um, once you yeah also you have to filter out sometimes I also get requests and they're not very serious about what they want and and so on so there you have to be careful and um, you just filter out what is what you think is good and what you think is not good and maybe um, why exactly is the client shitty right is are they offering little money so uh, then you can say hey you know what I'm sorry but I cannot do anything for you because your budget is not matching what I'm what I'm charging and don't don't let them bargain with you it's not a bargain game we all are earning our money and we all are you know having expenses so okay all right Shafiq I had a lot of great questions but we need to kind of get going here uh, with portfolio reviews I will do another um, Q&A on my YouTube channel where you can ask questions like this one and um, if you guys are here and are not subscribed make sure to subscribe and uh, we are going to be doing stuff like this more often uh, pricing I know it's always a big questions on, on pricing cool all right awesome guys so let's um, let's continue here Mustafa has been doing a lot of really cool stuff here um, okay so here we have some uh, print work and we're going we were going through some flyers and now we're going to through the business cards um, okay cool this looks great um, we have some um, banners here as well again here you're going very far to the edge Mustafa I would go you know leave a little bit more space on the edges just to make make sure that you know you have enough space um, just in general a tip for you is um, rather make the typefaces a little bit smaller leave a little bit more breathing room between your uh, the objects that you're putting because right now it's very overloaded and the reason for that is that you have a yellow and a blue background but you barely see anything of the background the background kind of like is filled with different text objects images uh, logo so just make all of everything that you have on this just a tiny bit smaller and leave a little bit of breathing room between the information because when I look at this for me it's like and the motor oh I see recently da, 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 da. it's a lot of information and I need to you know take a breath between every piece of information and I need to process this in my brain because if it's too much coming at me I don't even want to look at it because it's overloading me you know it's 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 um, um, how do you say it's difficult for me to look at it because I cannot process it well right it's too much at the same time and in that case I would recommend you make a better like put the um, more inf more um, important information which you did great here already DBA and the motor and OPEX V you made those a little bit bigger this is the more important information and then you have the images but the bottom part again using caps and so on um, not using caps will help you give a little bit of breathing room and make it better legible and not make it scream at, at the person so much right so um, that's just like a small tip but otherwise I think you're doing a great job I think this looks already very professional it look, looks like something I would see in a store somewhere so um, totally you think that you're doing a great job and special thanks ah, cool thank you so much yeah, I remember you were sending me the, um, the image. Cool. All right. Awesome. So I think, Mustafa, I think you're on the good way. Um, the only thing that I'm noticing also is here. Do you specialize on social media or do you specialize on packaging? What do you specialize on? I feel like you're doing a lot of social media stuff. But my question is, what do you really want to do? Do you want to deal with social media clients or do you want to do packaging or do you want to do branding? I feel like packaging and branding go really well together. Social media and marketing is uh, kind of like a different field. Um, and social media marketing is also something where you kind of have the struggle of people not paying enough uh, because they don't see the value in their social media, right? So if I were you, honestly, I would concentrate on branding and packaging. But if you really want to go into the social media field, then make sure to really concentrate your work on it and, make, and you know show that you're actually into it. I think you're doing a great job here. Um, I would, as I said in the beginning, I would filter out some of the older projects, look 2018. Maybe it's not what you're doing right now anymore, right? Or maybe there are some projects, funny and weird project, doesn't really tell me anything, right? 
So if you really want to get clients who are like, hey, this guy is about his game. You need to concentrate on that specific field that you're into. And I, that, I believe that will help you, um, that will help you get the right clients and that will help you not mislead them, you know? So here he's doing packaging and branding. So what is he actually doing, right? So make a decision there. I would say the more specialized you are in something, the more chances there are, somebody will actually hire you for that because they will know that you're specialized in that. They will know that five years you've been only doing that and only that and you're the specialist in this so that's my recommendation here reduce the projects work on the you know giving the the um, objects a little bit more breathing room which you did great here but here it's kind of a little bit overloaded and here also the backgrounds make sure that you can concentrate on your work right so that your work stands out and not emojis or the background it's not that important honestly the background does not say anything about your work except for giving it the mood of you know electronics or technology stuff like that cool hopefully this was helpful for you um i think you're on a really really great way and you also have a lot of project views here a lot of followers mustafa i think you're doing great okay next up we have bruno silva bruno has sent me his instagram and he is using his instagram to um to promote his work right so we can see he doesn't have any private stuff on this it's more like graphic design graphic design graphic design so that's why i can kind of take it seriously and i think it's important to keep your um, instagram game up but Bruno, if you don't have any Behance yet, Behance portfolio, make sure to create one as well because you will find new clients there as well. I can promise you. And Behance is a really great platform, especially if you're getting featured. A lot of clients will reach out to you and will want you to do something for them. So recommend to do um, to do a, a you know um, a professional portfolio site and and the Behance portfolio is free guys so if you have a cc subscription you can totally make yourself a portfolio like here we will see um niraj uh no never mind i think hannah's this one is um the adobe portfolio i believe it looks like that cool uh, <clears throat> so it's free and it will give you a more professional feel to your work right hi kyle good to see you awesome Cool, <laughs> Alka Papa is saying, everyone subscribe to Julia, yay, come. Um, okay, uh, all right, uh, Mustafa is also saying the edges are only in the mock-up, I'm leaving almost five centimeters of bleed for, yes, the bleed is one thing, but then the information getting too close to the edge is another thing, and also leaving breathing room is, you know, you should also leave some space on the sides, not only top to bottom. So, uh, yay, cool, all right um <laughs> awesome tips and I, i'm stopping screaming to the clients <laughs> um yeah but well sometimes it makes sense to use caps and sometimes it doesn't so if you have a lot of text and you want it to be well legible well to understand i would not necessarily use caps there all right cool so let's take a look at some of bruno's work we have some um cool video going on video work animation that's nice. <clears throat> okay, so Bruno is showing some of the things that he has done in Illustrator. Let's go. Oh, okay. So Bruno is show, giving the kind of like a tutorial on uh, what he was doing there. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Um, the only thing is, so your portfolio usually reaches out to clients, correct? So if you want to attract clients, clients are not really interested in learning illustrator are they they want to hire you for your work so if you have a portfolio make sure to keep in mind that you're attracting the clients because you do want to make money with design correct and um in this case this post would attract someone like me like a designer who wants to learn something new right but not a client what about this one <clears throat> here we have also a little animation this one da, 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 da. breast cancer awareness i think that's a really cool post <clears throat> and <clears throat> i feel like here you again um are showing something cool 
All right. I think, first of all, your animations are pretty cool. I would love to know how you're doing them. And here again, you're showing a tutorial, which is, it's cool to show tutorials. The only thing is, how will that attract clients to you, right? Cool. Yeah, this is some cool work here. Okay. So you're doing more, more tutorial work, as I, as, I, as I imagine. Then, if you're doing tutorial work, and if you want to do education, maybe that's the case, right, Bruno? So why aren't you, you know, attracting clients like education clients? For example, in my case, my client, one of my clients is Adobe. So the reason why I'm producing educational content is because I want to do education, right? And my Behance portfolio is mo mostly focused on freelance work. So it's attracting branding, packaging design clients, clients, right? Nothing to do with education. <clears throat> Think about it. Keep that in mind when you're when you're creating something like that. That look, that is looking super cool. I remember us doing the daily creative challenges on this. Um, cool. Yeah, I remember us doing that. It, again, it's a tutorial. Bruna, I think you have a lot of really cool work. I just think that uh, maybe if you want to make money with your design, you should consider the clients that you want to attract. Again. All right, cool. Otherwise, I think it's looking great. Um, I love the content that you have here. I think it's really beneficial to a lot of people and um, love it. I'm really liking this. If you really want to um, kind of get freelance clients, freelance design clients, start with a Behance portfolio and build yourself some projects there. Cool. Hopefully this was helpful, Bruno. Um, next one up, we have Niraj Kushwaha. Niraj is doing some illustration work here at the bottom, I see. And then we have some um, even industrial design, super cool. <clears throat> uh, Garage Society, this is some branding, the Creative Pen podcast. Um, I guess it's a branding project. So let's, take, let's take a look at that. Invite for, okay, so this is like an invite. It's basically like a, maybe a digital invite. Um, cool, I love this. I think I love the texture in the background. I think what you could do is um, just make it a little bit lighter because right now it seems a little bit gloomy and maybe, um, you know, I would put some lighter work into this. And also, uh, I'm wondering if, because you're showing a different variety of projects here, right? We have wooden chair, uh, 3D model texture render. Uh, I would love to see some other perspectives here. So. Did you design this chair? I would love to see how you designed it. Um, I would love to see the process. Maybe you went from sketches to, um, you know, to the 3D model. And then you maybe had some variations that you've created. And maybe <clears throat> you have some different perspectives, perspectives of the render. I really love this. I feel like this could be something for you. And, um, you know, doing some like industrial design and designing some uh, 3D models. Um, there are also companies who hire freelancers to create 3D models for them, right? So they will give you some kind of technical sketch and you're supposed to create the 3D model for them. So that could be something that you would, could think of if you want to make money as a freelancer. And if that's the case, I would, I would love to see more perspective and I would love to see a close up and something that's in context, right? So where is this chair standing? Is it part of a kitchen? Um, is somebody sitting on it? How big is this chair? Show it in, in proportion to a, to a person. Um, show it from the front, from the side, from the back. Um, show a close up. How does the material look? So that's what you want to show when you're showing something like this. But I think this looks really, really cool. And um, um, on Behance, I feel like you kind of should have, um, you know, a project, a project that's not only one picture, one image, but a project that's, you know, showing the product from different perspective and that's explaining more. I would love to see some, you know, some text here and some um, description. What, uh, who was the client? What were you working on? What were, what were the challenges? What were your solutions? That's what the clients want to know, right? How did you solve the actual problem of this project? Cool. Otherwise, this, I think this looks really cool. Garage Society. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we have more of a branding project, as it seems. About the, I really love the typeface that you picked here. It's really 
well legible i love it and um the proportions here that you've picked really great i love the way you kind of make, made this a little bit more bold and made this um sadly a little bit less bold uh, and it's very subtle kind of changes but um it my eye is very pleased by this because there is a lot of space around this I can process the information, I can pick out the more important information here, Garage Society definitely is the mo more important information. You can see how, you know, how that kind of stands out here. Uh, Coworking Space headquartered in Hong Kong and recently opened their first center in India based in Cyber City, uh, Haryana. My aim was to create a sales deck for, uh, for them keeping in mind the existing competition of co-working spaces in Delhi and why should people approach them for requirements. Also to give them a brief about the Garage Society, a new emerging brand and workspace for business requirements. Brand new workspace for business requirements. Cool. Yeah, I think this is a really great description. It gives me an insight into the project. Now let's take a look at the typography. Here we have some gradient going on that's not very smooth. We have like those circles. Um, that can happen if you uh, export in low resolution maybe. So. In, instead of res, uh, exporting in 72 dpi maybe try um 150 that will help you with the gradients probably um cool mosaic science we have one typeface here we have the colors nice um I, I can't complain here i think this is a great slide um the garage society now we're getting into the images and the actual application of the brand right we have the logo here, who we are. So this, these are probably the graphics that you've created for them. I love these modern looking shapes. Um, here I'm thinking maybe you have this line that's not very straight, but um, here we have straight lines and rounded edges. So what if this line was straight actually? You know, what if it was like a parallel line to these lines? And I think that could work a little bit better here because it creates an unnecessary tension here um but it's looking really great so far i think it's looking very exciting and i'm i want to keep on scrolling who we are founded in 2014 garage society is the leading community operator and so on so we have so again we have some more inf information about garage society really cool we have some um variation in the line spacing so um I understand that you wanted to put the sentences together, right? So you can see that they're the sentences, but then make it look a little bit more intentional. Um, then leave a little bit more space between the different sentences, but then if the sentence is together, put them together like you did here. So I would leave a little bit more space between the sentences. Cool. I love the colors that you're using here. I think they're very subtle, but um, it's working really great. Cool, Garage Society, Strategic gen Original Coverage, Cool, Business Cafe, okay, so you've created some graphics maybe for their, um, I don't know, online platforms, <clears throat> cool, I'm wondering if you were the one responsible for the branding, did you do the, this G logo or not? I think that could be cool to mention uh, what were your responsibilities in this project, right? At, at the top somewhere, um, I couldn't, I wasn't able to read it anywhere. All right, but I think it's a really, really great project. And I think honestly, uh, Niraj, I think that should be, it is your first project, but um, it should be one of the few projects that you present because there is a big discrepancy between this project and this project, I feel like, because this project is just, you know, it's, it's one, one um, artwork that you've created. This type of stuff goes deeper, you know? Creating a brand goes deeper than just creating an invite. So if you want uh, to attract clients who want to create a big project with you, like this branding project, because this is big, you can make a lot of money with this stuff. And if you only show them this, instead of showing them, hey, by the way, I'm also creating invites, you know, there is a big discrepancy there. And what you want to show is that you're concentrated on these big projects. You're a big designer and you can take the responsibility. So that's what I would show, right? So what is this? Uh, concept market scene design and I'll test my render through V-Ray. I can see that you're great in 3D modeling. So maybe there is a way to combine 
uh, branding and 3D modeling. Maybe you can create uh, some kind of 3D models that can be implemented in the branding. So maybe that will be your niche. That could be something that you can concentrate on and you can make m more projects reflecting exactly that. So I would, in your, uh, if I were you, I would just, um, you know, create more passion projects, but bring these two things together. If that's the client that you want to attract, right? So I would create branding projects where you're using 3D to enhance the brand, if that makes sense. And then I, I, I would um, remove everything else that doesn't have to do with it um, and concentrate on that because that can actually make you a lot of money. Okay, then we have this space here, space, okay. Comfortable table can be used for a bedside or put near your beanbag, it's very easy to carry. Okay, cool. Um, if you are, if you are doing, um, this is industrial design, what you're doing here. It's a 3D model, but if you've designed this, you are doing industrial design and industrial design, um, can projects like this, this is really great. I think you're doing a really great job here. In this case, I would show maybe like a couple of sketches. Maybe you did some sketches before and then you put it into a 3D model or something like that. So that could be really, really cool. And. I feel like for you, the combination of 3D and branding would be great. And in this case, I would also remove all of the other things. This is really great if that's an illustration or like a style that you've created for yourself. This is really cool. But there is a difference between being a branding designer and doing illustration. So I would definitely, um, for yourself, specialize in one thing because um, that will give you more time to really practice it and intensify it and become better at, at it, right? So um, I think that would be really, really cool. Cool, um, most of I saying, I'm a, if, if I'm interested in social media designs and branding, should I specialize in a specific in a specific field? Most of I, it would be great, but if you don't know where to specialize or where you want to specialize, there's not really, you can't really do anything about it except for finding out. I would do some passion projects and figure out of from yourself what you enjoy doing the most i think that's the most important part because once you specialize in something you really want to keep it up and you want to keep it going and you want to have fun doing that right you don't want to be like ugh, i don't i'm not liking this anymore after doing it for a month right so you want to keep on doing this for 20 30 years and that's where you become really really great at something if you practice something over and over and if you improve your skill set in this specific thing cool all right, so Niraj, I think your um, I think your um, branding and industrial design projects are really strong. I think you should remove this creative pen um, um, and and the illustration work. And I think you should concentrate on industrial design and branding. And in the best case, combine both of these and create two or three passion projects that are really showing great examples for that. And industrial design or you know 3D modeling can also be um, applied to illustration. You can create some really cool 3D models of some you know um, maybe shapes or uh, maybe there are some products that you want to be, to create the branding for. I think you have really great opportunity to you know to implement both of these skills that you're really great at and combine them and then specialize in that. Cool. Uh, I'm a creative guy who loves to play with designing tools and create some unique designs. Um, I would change some ab about that because right now you don't, don't seem, you don't sound very professional and serious about it. You say, I want to play with designing. So that means you're not sitting down every single day and you're working. It means that you're like, oh, mm, if I feel like it, mm, I'm going to do it. If I don't feel like it, I'm not going to do it. So what does it tell, what does it say about you to the client? It says that, oh, this guy might not even reach back out to me with design or he might be late or maybe today he doesn't feel like doing it anymore. Maybe he's just like been playing yesterday and today he doesn't feel like playing. So um, this needs to sound more professional. I would write something. I am a creative, I'm a um, branding, and, branding and 3D designer who loves to experiment and to experiment with new tools and um, and create uni unique experiences because that will exactly show what you will be doing 
because a branding usually does not contain or does not involve 3D rendering, right? But you will make it very unique. You will make it your own, right? You will make it, you will implement your skills to create something very specific and something very unique. And it not being just a visual product, it being a whole experience, right? So I'm wondering how can you implement maybe animation of 3D objects inside your branding project? Let me know what you think. I think that would be a really, really cool idea and something for you to specialize on and very unique also. Not everybody has the skill set of branding and 3D modeling. Cool, Neeraj, hopefully this was helpful. Also the amount of links I think is great here. We have some LinkedIn. We have Facebook, Facebook maybe not necessary, otherwise um, um, if you don't have a professional profile there, I don't think it's necessary to put a Facebook. Uh, I think LinkedIn, Dribbble are great, maybe if you have an Instagram page that always shows a process of your work or something, that could be great too. Alright Niraj, hopefully this was helpful. Next one up we have Mariam Al Saik. Uh, inspire creativity, cool. Um, I really love this um, interaction here that's happening, this animation, I really love this. Um, juice the box, I think that looks really cool and the tea kind of reminds me of a palm tree almost. Really, really cool. Um, let me click on some of these projects and let's take a look. So you're doing branding as much as I understand uh, from Huda's Kitchen. I'm wondering what this little part on top is. If that's necessary, I would just even take it away or maybe just... Um, um, just make this D a little bit longer to the top uh, like you did here with the K I think that will make it a little bit more cohesive or maybe even bring some shapiness into the D up here like you did in, in the K I feel like that will make it a little bit more um, cohesive from both directions cool otherwise I think the logo is great um, the typeface is also awesome here we have this little shape that's not very um, you know um, we have these very rounded shapes here, so I would I would create something like this and put it um, here um, in the instead of this shape, right? Uh, From Huda's Kitchen is a home business that makes uh, makes and bake makes and bake desserts that makes and bakes uh, desserts or just I would just maybe write that bakes desserts. Um, From Huda's Kitchen, home business. Okay, we have a mood board going on. I think this mood board is really cool because you have some logo. I have seen this before, I think on a Pinterest. Super cool. I, I love these illustrations that you put yourself as a mood board. Uh, works really well here with the color palette also. Um, love the color palette. Love how you're showing the proportions of use of the colors in the brand. Um, that's kind of really high level, I would say. Really cool. Kelly, cover your dreams. Okay, so we have two typefaces um, and we have these animations. Uh, I would love to see more. I would love to see more close-ups of the packaging. Um, I would love to see the packaging on the table. I would love to see some cool, you know, cool, cool perspectives of the packaging. I think you did a really nice job here with these. I think it's really, really cool. But uh, right now I'm not really able to see them, you know, close up. I, I want to. See I want to kind of dive into your project, right? But I'm not able to really uh, because um, because the images are so tiny. I wish they were bigger. Okay, cool. Otherwise, I think this is great. I think the color palette is amazing, and the way you've um, put it into uh, into the different assets. I think you did a great job. Um, the presentation could be, you know, bigger. Could be you know how clients say make the logo bigger <laughs> but really i want to be able to see things more clearly right in the larger resolution i would love to see close up of this okay so let's jump into the next one we have the juice box cool i really love the logo i think the logo is really really great um the juice box provides healthy and delicious juices with fresh ingredients the juice box brand is simple and minimalistic which represents its products the juice box brand is simple and minimalistic, um, which represents its products. Cool. Love the mood board. I think that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, it seems like you put a, like a white overlay over this, like a semi-transparent overlay. I would uh, not do it because these colors are great and I think you can just show the full color here. 
looks cool. Color palette, very amazing color palette. Works really well with the juicing brand. Um, typefaces, low fidelity mock-up. I love this. This look, looks so fun, and I think you did a great job, kind of putting this together um, in the color and the colors of the different juices. Um, I like. I really like this. Honestly, I think this is cool. Um, and then you put it into a mock-up. The mock-up is not so great. We have these cutouts here that are creating pixelation. So make sure to find them. Maybe you can find a mock-up first, um, and then create those. Um, those illustrations kind of resembling the bottle um, shape of the mock-up because that will make it easy for you to apply the design to mock-up and keep it cohesive throughout the, the project right um cool most of I saying I like Mariam's portfolio yeah me too I think it's really cool it's really colorful and um, the only thing is here the little imprecision in, in the you know the pixelation here in the in the bottles otherwise this looks really fun and I wish these bottles would look exactly the same just in you know three dimensions but otherwise I think this is great um, love the typefaces I think this is a great project again here I would love to see more you know maybe like a close-up to a bottle maybe like two bottles together maybe like bottles of the same color next to each other bottles of the other color next to each other and all shown in the like in a different way a little bit but I love that you're implementing this um, Giphy style. I think it makes it a little bit more exciting to look at. And um, I really, really love this. I think this is a really great slide. Did a great job here. Cool, Mariam. Let's take a look at your about info. Um, passion regarding design since she was a teenager. She, she's a web media student in Bahrain, Polytechnic. She's grateful for her major as it has everything she liked from design, coding, and e-marketing. She enjoys learning new software and is related to design. Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty cool description. Here we have a little bit, um, you know, the text goes really close to the, to the picture. So I would maybe, you know, make the text more boxy and kind of pull it a little bit away from the, from the image here. But the image is great. I think it kind of shows like graphic design work, although it might be stock image even because I have worked with color uh, color palettes, but I've never laid them out like that, you know? <laughs> so, um, cool. Otherwise, I think it's great. I think your portfolio is really nice. And for being a student, I think you already look really professional. Uh, I will work on the, um, on the one mock-up that I was telling you about and, you know, presenting designs larger and zooming in, zooming out. Um, you know, showing different perspectives, showing different lineups, uh, you know different uh, maybe you can even show it in um, in context so maybe I don't know maybe you can implement some vegetables that has been used or something like that in that illustration style that you had there I think that's really awesome cool awesome Mariam I think you're really on a good way and I love the um, the juice box project um, the who does kitchen one is also really great I also love that you've created yourself a Wix site I think these are free as long as you as you put um, this design this site was designed with Wix the website builder I feel like this one um, could be free or almost free very cheap at least so if you guys are considering to creating your own website this could be an opportunity for you all right Mariam, Mariam. hopefully that was uh, helpful and next one up last but not least we have Hannah Dickens Hannah I already love what you're doing here I see that you're doing a lot of illustration uh, we, we have some uh, illustrate packaging illustration that's also really cool I love how when you hover over this project that it shows you something different I think that's really really great here as well um, that's really really cool I think that's awesome it makes me want to click on it so that's all you want I love this little illustration of yourself and I love that when I hover over it again I see something else designer and illustrator Hannah Dickens very nice I really love it I think you're you look really established already okay cool so let's uh, take a look at the last project and that has to do with book illustration as it seems my monster ate my homework that's so cool I really love the illustration it makes me happy to, to look at this uh, children's literature illustration creative writing so it's really great how you are um, showing your responsibilities in this project right you're showing that um, you've been doing illustration and creative writing here 
an illustrated children's story by Hannah Dickens. Love the typefaces here as well. I'm assuming this is um, hand, um, uh, hand uh, lettered. So what happens when we bury our feelings and problems instead of addressing them? My, my monster ate my homework is the story of a boy, boy named, named Leo who doesn't know how to deal with the hard things in life. As an attempt to get rid of the, these problems, he feeds them to his pet monster, Birdie. Cool. I think this is a really great story. Love the layout in the book also. Things to discuss after reading. Parents, guardians and teachers. Very nice. Um, early iteration. See, this is also really awesome to, to see like how did you get where you, um, where you were going. And we have this little slideshow going on that we can click through. This is, I'm assuming, where you were developing uh, concepts and characters. Super cool. Spread one, spread two. I think you're, this is your thing, honestly, Hannah. I think you are an illustrator. Um, this is really great. Awesome. Love it. Cool. Yeah. D I mean, I don't have no words, honestly. I don't even know why you sent me your portfolio. <laughs> but this is really cool. I love it. Um, that you can see like the... Um, uh, the proportion of the characters, the different colors and how they appear, right? Maybe like a variation that you've created. Super cool. I think it looks great. All right, and then we have the storyboard here, starting with page one, two, three, four, and so on. That's super cool. And then we can continue looking through this more in detail. Love the color palettes. Very nice. Cool. I would love to see this book in the bookshelf, honestly. I think this is really cool. Mike is saying, hi Mike, good to see you, nice illustrations. Yeah, this is Hannah Dickens. Hannah is doing a really amazing job. Um, cool. I think Hannah, this is a great project. I'm, I'm loving it, to be honest. So let's take a look at this. This is, this is a flip snack. There is also issue.com. They also give this kind of very realistic presentation of a, a editorial design. Really cool. Very nice. Yeah, I, I mean, you're really great at it. So um, this is really cool. I also love the intro image that you have here. One side vision van. Let's take a look at this. This is really nice. I love the colors here, first of all. It's a very cohesive illustration. Um, you're using texture in some, in some points here in the glasses and these glasses, but not everywhere. I think that makes it really exciting. One side, because one vision, because vision empowers. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you've made a series of posters, I'm guessing. Um, these are like festival posters. Fly me to the moon, very nice. Now, I also love how you're showing the process. So here we have these illustration uh, sketches um, and then they're becoming reality. Then they're becoming kind of actual digital sketches. So Hannah, honestly, I think you're doing great. I think maybe if you feel like you don't get enough clients, what you have to do is create your online portfolio on Behance. Uh, build your social media, show little snippets all of, of all of this work, and I'm sure that you'll be you'll be getting a lot of work in this field, especially um, these days. Also, a lot of tech companies hire um, illustrators to create some you know interesting designs for their um, social media or for their campaigns. So um, I also really love this little thing at the bottom that you say, which says "Have courage and be kind." Love it. I think this is really cool. I also love how this can, you know, this illustration has been applied to um, to a, a physical product here. I think this looks really nice. Cool, Hannah. Um, honestly, I don't think that um, I have any more comments on this because it's just amazing. I think you're just really, really great at what you're doing. Uh, what is here? Graphic Communication Design 2020. Okay, so we have a more... Um, so we have a more branding related project. Okay, let's take a look at this from the beginning. This is GRCD, Graphic Communication Design 2020. Okay, project statement, brand statement. I think it's always great to put in the project statement and the brand statement. Um, it's really awesome. By the way, guys, if you want to take a look at this, I can post you guys uh, 
a link to Hannah's portfolio. I think there's a lot that you can um, take a look at. So um, check out the link. I just posted it into the chat. Um, this is really cool. Yeah, I love the typefaces. I think this works really well. Uh, GRCD, charcoal and cream, color, great color combination. And we have some rust here, the red. I also love how you didn't just uh, put like a block of this red color, but you kind of circled it, which makes it understand, okay, so this is the color that she's using as well. Really interesting way to, um, to put color palette. Um, really nice. Brand guidelines. Cool. All right, we have some some mock-ups here that look very realistic. I would maybe um, build in some texture here because right now it looks like it's very perfect. Um, but prints like that are never perfect. So um, there's some textures that you can just add to your project here. Um, you can get those also, guys, uh, by going to stock.adobe.com. They also have some free stuff now, by the way. Let's take a look at that. Um, Adobe.com, and here you can you can get some free, cool stuff. So if we click click on free here, we'll be able to find um, illustrations, stock photos, um, stock vectors, stock footage, a bunch of a bunch of things about seventy thousand different assets. So let's take a look for texture background okay hopefully we'll find it no okay this should be this should be good all right oh henna by the way if you're interested you can probably also sell your work so if you are have any illustrations and you want to sell those um, you can you can click here on sell and upload your work and you'll be able to set, set, sell it in stock here so we have different textures here that we can apply to our designs in the background so if you guys are looking for anything like that to apply for your project backgrounds this is the place and those things are all free right so if I click on this I can just download that no need to sign up for any you know with credit card or anything like that I think this is a really great texture here where is it Anyways, so there's a lot of stuff here to discover and to use to make your project look more exciting. Cool. Let's continue here with Hannah. This is for me, use them all. This is for me, use them all. Okay, cool. So there's it's like a concept for, uh, for the website here. Nice, social media. This is also a really great way to show social media, right? We were talking earlier about how do you show you know how do you show posts that belong together Let, let's say we have four posts and they all belong together this is a really great way to do to do that and you'll be able to see the feed also how it looks all together right so um, I think Hannah you've developed a really great way to to do that here really cool I also love how the project is cohesive through the social media as well um, really nice cool love the use of the um of this red color here of the rust color in the envelope really nice cool Hannah, you are a pro you're really really amazing and we can all just get inspired from you um it's really nice san frank california august 2019 some illustration that's on bahamas super cool and here we have some process of how you're doing the illustrations, which it's just really cool. You're you're just doing a really amazing job, you know, showing the process, showing all the assets that you're using, the color palette. It's a very light and easy to consume way. Um, it's not over, you know, over designed or um, too gimmicky. It's just very simple and easy to understand. Super cool. Okay, cool, Hannah. I don't have no nothing more to say. Let's say, um, let's see your Instagram. And Hannah, go everybody, go follow Hannah. Um, she's putting up some really cool work up here. Uh, cool, it's under underscore Hannah Dickett, Dickens. Um, yeah, I think that's really cool. And I feel like. Hannah, you can totally use the illustrations from your, the ones that you've created before 
like let's say the, my, my, my monster ate my book and you can take you know little parts of it little close-ups and keep on posting them keep on posting them keep on tagging all the important things that you want to um, attract like illustration keep on tagging um, Adobe keep on keep on tagging uh, me keep on tagging all the other creatives that are doing the same thing maybe someone will reshare and that's how you can grow your social media and with your social media growth you will be able to get more um, you know more work and so on so yeah I would love to see more on your social media Hannah um, and you're doing that here as well I feel like you can do way more with this uh, image alone I think it, like you can you can just like take parts of it and post them individually as well um really cool all right guys we are over an hour now it was super super fun to hang out with you guys today thanks for everybody who was tuning in and who was hanging out with me make sure to follow me on instagram at julia maselska if you want to and this is where you can also send me your portfolio link and this is where we're going to be reviewing them as well um no we are going to be reviewing them right here on my youtube channel but if you want your portfolio reviewed send it over to me on my instagram and i'll make sure to put you on the list and we'll be doing this every friday almost i usually do it every friday if i get enough links i uh, usually go through five people per 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 day so um hopefully this was helpful for you guys and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching and got some really cool inspiration uh, mike mosa say she's really great yeah she's really really good cool all right my friends have a pleasant weekend and i will see you next time make sure to tune in if you have any questions um, make sure to tune into my instagram and just send me a message if you have any questions and uh, we'll see you soon bye bye